Hi there. In this clip, we're going to take a look at how to determine the x and y intercepts of a function. But before we do that, let's figure out what we mean by the term x and y intercepts by taking a look at some random squiggly shape on a graph. So you'll see I've gone ahead and shown you a squiggly blue line that crosses the x and y axis. Now, what do we mean by x and y intercept? Well, it's really just the line or the point where it crosses these axes. So for example, the x-intercept is right here because it cuts across the x-axis. And then the y-intercept is this point right here because it crosses the y-axis. Now here's a question. For the y-axis, what will the x-value be of this point? Well, if you said 0, give yourself a pat on the back. The y-intercept always looks like this. 0 for the x value of the point, and then some number, which we'll just call y. So a y-intercept always has an x value of 0, no matter where it is on this line, which means for the x-intercept, it looks like this. We always have a value for x, but then the y value will always be 0. So we need to remember that for finding the x and y-intercepts with some algebra. Let's do that now. Here we've been given a function that looks like this, y equals negative 2x plus 8. And we need to find the x and y intercepts of this function. Okay, for step one, let's solve for the y intercept first. And to do that, the trick is you always set x to 0, because you remember we're looking at something like this. This point always has an x value of 0. So I'm just going to rewrite the equation like this, y equals negative 2, and then where the x is, I'm going to put in a 0. Now to simplify this, negative 2 times 0 is just 0. So meaning y will be equal to 0 plus 8, or y is just equal to 8. And that is my y-intercept. And there we go, the y-intercept is done. So let's do the x-intercept. For the x-intercept, we use the same trick. We just set the y value this time equal to 0, because we're solving for a point that looks like this, where y will always be 0. So I'm going to set y to 0 and set the rest just like it is, negative 2x plus 8. Now we need to isolate for this x variable, meaning I need to get this plus 8 to the other side. So the opposite of plus will be minus. So I'll subtract negative 8 from both sides. And I end up with negative 8 equals negative 2x. Now I need to divide both sides by negative 2 because this negative 2 is multiplying the x. The opposite of multiplication is division. So to get rid of that negative 2, we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. And the negative 2's will cancel here, leaving just an x. And then I have negative 8 divided by negative 2. Well, the negative 8 divided by negative 2 just makes a positive 4. 4 equals x. Or I like to flip that so my variable's on the left-hand side. It just makes it a little bit easier to write. And I'm going to say x equals 4. And there is my x-intercept. So there you go. There's how we solve for the y-intercept and the x-intercept. Now, a little tip. In this example, y equals negative 2x plus 8, the function happened to be a line on a graph. However, you could get any shape. You could get a circle or a parabola, and sometimes you're going to have more than one x-intercept or more than one y-intercept. So quite often you'll have to do some factoring first before you can go ahead and plug in the x equals 0 or the y equals 0. So remember, if you have a parabola, for example, you have to factor it first before you go ahead and solve for your x and y intercepts. Okay, good luck.